The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Ethelbert, what on earth's going on over there? Oh, that's Grace. I can't get her away from that piano. Uh, Tell her to let Herman play. Oh, Grace, that's enough. Thanks. Hmm. Besides, this is the famous noise abatement week. Well, it may be famous, Casey, but it's not as famous as my favorite line. Anchor Hawking is the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, King of the Apes. Afternoon, the Blue Note Cafe. Leaning comfortably on the bar are Casey and Ann Williams. And behind the bar, it's Chief Custodian Ethelbert. You and Miss Williams are going to the circus tonight, huh, Casey? Yeah, we gotta go, pal. It's an assignment. <laughs> Every year, Ethelbert, he's found an excuse to go to the circus. You, you think I like to go to the circus, honey? Huh? Well, if you don't, you'd better reserve yourself a chair in the old men's home. <laughs> She's right, Casey. Any guy who can't enjoy the circus is slipping and fast. I love the clowns and the elephants. I still like the brass bands and the peanuts and popcorn. Well, I go for the lady bareback riders and the lady acrobats and the lady... That's uh, enough. <laughs> well, I just wanted to establish that I'm not slipping, Annie. I'm simply matured, that's all. Hmm. What kind of assignment you two got at the big show? Principally, we're covering the feature act, King of the Eight. They say that's swell. According to pictures on the billboards, that fella, the king, keeps 20 or 30 giant gorillas under his complete control. Now, circus posters some rate a little bit, Ethelbert. The 20 or 30 giant gorillas are really six orangutans. And their trainer isn't the king. His name is king. Charles King. Oh. But an orangutan is a pretty big monkey, eh? Huh? Big enough. A full-grown male can break a couple of Joe Lewis's in two. Then I guess six orangutans are plenty for a guy to go into a cage alone with. I'd say so. Well, we'd better get over to the circus, Annie. It's nearly time for our date. Oh, uh-huh, yeah. I thought you said you were going to the circus tonight. We're interviewing Mr. King after the matinee performance. We're seeing the show tonight. Oh. Well, so long, pal. So long, Ethelbert. Have a good time, and uh, don't let him lock you up in the monkey cage. <laughs> Nuts to you, pal. So long. <laughs> so long, Casey. And nuts to you. King's dressing room is this way, Annie. The afternoon show is still going on. Casey, let's peek through those back curtains. Oh, no, no. <laughs> look, we'll see the whole thing from out front tonight, Annie. Besides, that's the wind-up you hear now, the grand finale. Oh, yeah, I guess it is. Look, the clowns are coming from the ring. Oh, let's walk. Oh, I've seen clowns before. We've got a date, Oh, Annie. just We're... a minute, Casey. Oh, okay. Hmm. Nice-looking uh, uh, performers coming through the curtains now. That, that one in the black spangled tights has got beautiful eyes. <laughs> we'll find Mr. King. Oh, I'm in no hurry, We've Annie. We've got a date. Huh? Oh. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, there, there, there's... That's the star dressing room there. Well, give a knock. Now, wait a minute. There's several star dressing rooms. Well, here's the one with the king's name Don't on it. Don't you dare call me that. I'll call you worse if I catch you with that bond of again. You Uh-oh. better not, you big pollutant. A little argument inside this that room, really Casey. Oh, king. I'm fed up with your jealousy. If I feel like talking to a man, any man, I'm going to... Well, I'm not going to sneak up in corners with Fennelli again, I Try tell you. Try and stop 
me. Oh, Don't you put your hands on me. Don't it's time to break this up, Annie. Come on. That knock should do it. Well, who's that? Uh, Miss Williams and Casey in the Morning Express. If you're Mr. King, your press agent made a date for us to see you. Oh, oh yes, yes, of course. Yeah, just a moment. Hmm, that right. ended the battle, Casey. Sure did. Uh, please, uh, please come in. Oh, thank you. Uh, Miss Williams and Mr. Casey, you said? That's right. I'm Charles King. Nice to know both of you. Nice to know you. Mr. King. I, uh, allow me to present my wife, Mrs. King. How do you do? If you'll excuse me, I'll be running along. Wait, Bernice. Yeah? This lady and gentleman are going to do a feature story about the act. Don't you want to stay Your in the... Your act, Charlie. They don't want to interview me. See you later. I'd like you to stay. I've got some shopping to do. Nice to meet you, Miss Williams and Mr. Casey. So long. So long. My, my wife is always on the go, as you Americans say. You will pardon her, I'm sure. Certainly. I am very grateful for this visit. Publicity is the lifeblood of show business, uh, Perhaps I'd better take you downstairs to the animal room. The three of us and my orangutans can get acquainted all at the same time. Uh-huh. I fancy that's what you wish. Yes, sir, that's it. Yeah. Come on, then we'll walk down that ramp to the animal room. Well, careful, Annie. Slim. Bernice! What? I thought you were going shopping. I am. I just stopped to talk a minute with Mr. Finelli. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Finelli. You better get your shopping done, Bernice. Okay. See you later, Luigi. Uh, sure, Bern. Uh, Mrs. King. Miss Williams, if you and Mr. Casey will excuse me, I want a word with that man. Yes, of course. Yeah, go Mr. ahead. Thanks. Just a moment, Fanelli. This uh, seems to be the old triangle business, And Casey. how? That uh, Fanelli is good looking. Yeah, so is Mrs. King. They're both young. Too. Mm. King must be 50. Oh, easy. I mean, he looks like a tough guy to tangle with. Huh? Mm. He seems to be quietly laying down a little law to Mr. Fanelli over there. Look at that. Uh, thanks for waiting for me. Not at all. It's all right. Uh, here's the ramp. The cage of my beast sounds far from the bottom. Uh, that guy you were talking with had on tights, Mr. King. What is he, an acrobat? He's a wire walker. Oh. Uh, do you good people know very much about orangutans? <laughs> Practically nothing. We've seen a couple in the zoos. Then but... perhaps you'd like to have a little basic information for your story, Miss Williams. Well, hmm? Yes, I would. But the orangutan is found only in Borneo and Sumatra. In size, he's the second of the great apes, ranking next to the gorilla. In intelligence, though some place the chimpanzee in a higher category, I rank the orangutan first. Uh, those are my animals in those two cages. <laughs> Casey, we've never seen an orangutan like that big fellow at the zoo. Oh, that's Boy. Nimbu. Boy. He's a full-grown male. If he stood upright, which he seldom does, he'd be five feet seven inches tall. And he tips the scale at uh, 22 stone, about 300 pounds. Mm. Why do you keep him alone in that cage? Is he vicious or something? No, I'm keeping Nimbu separate temporarily because he, he hasn't been very well. No. I'm quite worried about him. Without Nimbu, I wouldn't have the same act. And, well, I'm fond of the old fellow. <laughs> Seems pretty fond of you. Casey, did you see him reach out his hand to Mr. King like a big child? Yeah. <laughs> I let him take my hand and put his other long arm around my neck. I wouldn't want him that close to me, brother. I wouldn't dare permit such familiarity from the one in the next cage. Oh, he doesn't like you, huh? Oh, he doesn't like anybody. Fear of Nimbu is the only thing that keeps Dillinger in his place. Dillinger? <laughs> I call him that because he's a public enemy, Miss Williams. Oh. Hello, boss. Oh, hello, Joe. I was beginning to wonder where you were. I was out getting some fresh medicine for Nimbu. You know, I never want these animals left alone. Where's Kion? Uh, he have probably gone for a drink. That man is no good. Yes, I know that, but he knows big apes. Because he is a little ape himself. Whether you should send him back to Borneo where we got him. I'll have another talk with Tyon. Oh, uh, excuse me, Miss Williams, Mr. Casey. This is Johannes Fleet, my chief assistant. Mr. Fleet? How are you, Mr. Fleet? Yeah. Johan knows as much or more about orangutans as I do. He was born in Dutch Borneo and talks their language. I talk Dutch and English, not ape talk. That is for men like that Tyan. Tyan, yeah. my second assistant. He's a Dayak. Oh, that's a Borneo right. tribesman. Uh, you can write a few colorful lines about him, Miss Williams. It's feeding time. I go get fruit for you, eh? Oh. He's a pleasing character, Casey. Yeah. I heard what you said, Miss Williams. Joanne Phillip is, uh, well, it isn't easy to find men who can properly care for orangutans, and he knows the beast. Same applies to Tyon, who is, as you Americans might say, another stinker. Hey, Batman. <laughs> oh, there he is. Joe says you were left to watch those animals, Tyon. Orang Utan not go away when lock in cage. Uh, Tyon get thirsty, go for 
For get drink. You're always getting a drink, and I'd like you to... And be... if we try and uh, don't be more good, you you send him back, chop, chop, quick to burn you. <laughs> uh, you don't for do that, boss man. You need try and... Uh, all right. Here's a fresh bottle of medicine. Give him some. Okay, boss man. First I tell him I gonna do him good. <laughs> He's chattering to that big ape. Yeah. He's seeing the ape answers back. Well, I'm going to get some pictures of this. This is terrific. Science seems to really talk ape language, Miss Williams. The Dax believe orangutans have a language, and some men learn it. Ah, that ought to be a good shot. Here comes Flea. I'll get one of him feeding it. Hey, but man, Nimbo, he no look good in the eye, and his tongue is tongue very dry. He more sick than before. Better you should not have him work tonight. Jack's never so good without Nimbu, Joe. Never will it be so good if Nimbu die. Oh, well, the two of you are right, I suppose. I shan't work him tonight. Oh, then Casey and I won't see him in your act. And I'm sorry, Miss Williams. You won't see him tonight. <laughs> The most daring, colossal, engrossing, educational exhibition of man's mastery over the savage beast that has ever been witnessed in the history of the universe. Sit, Annie, this is King Jack. You're throwing up the cage, King Jack. Yeah. Most dangerously intelligent animals known to man. Orangutan. Well, that nimble sure Giant looks dangerous and wise. Of the jungle the other wild of Borneo. Afternoon. One man dares to enter the cage, alone and unarmed, and to bend them to his superior will. Ladies and gentlemen, the outstanding, unexcelled star attraction of the circus world, King of the Apes! Boy, that was some build-up, wasn't it, huh? The ringmaster did use a few superlatives. <laughs> oh, Mr. King looks nice in that jungle explorer's outfit, doesn't he? Yeah. His wife isn't half bad in her shorts. She is not in the cage. Oh, she's just outside over on the left there, oh, Annie. Let's see. <laughs> Look, Casey. They're letting the ape into the ring cage now from those wagons. Yeah, that, that Joe Fleet is superintending the job. I don't see Tyan. Oh, he's around somewhere, I imagine. Dylan's just coming into the cage now. Ooh, he's a mean-looking animal. Mm. I'm sorry we're not going to see Nimbu do his stuff. He's the real star of this act, you yeah, know. Yeah, and King depends on him. He told me he doesn't have to carry that big whip in the ring with him when Nimbo's there. Yeah, he's look, the boss. Look, thing. Annie, look. The big monks are going to ride those tricycles. Look at that, Annie. That <laughs> I uh, thought you didn't care for circuses. Oh, uh, uh, well, it's part of my job to come here and take pictures, that's what was that? Funny cry, wasn't it? Animal or something, I guess. Casey, those big apes stopped riding in that cry. Yeah. King can't get them to start again. Seem to be listening. Oh, there it goes again. Hey, look at Dillinger. He's grabbed Mr. King. He's killing him. He's got him on the throat, Annie. Annie, I'm going to shoot some pictures of this. That cry we heard, Annie. I've got a hunch this wasn't any accident. Mother's Day is a week from Sunday. Why not make this an occasion to be remembered? Make Mother Queen for the day. Keep her out of the kitchen. Let the whole family pitch in and cook this Mother's Day dinner yourself. It's not as difficult as it sounds, particularly if you rely on Fire King Oven Glass, the amazing oven glass which practically assures baking results. Plan your meal around a big baked casserole dish. Supplement it with hot bread or biscuit. And top the meal off with a homemade pie. Why, it's easy if you follow the recipes and use Fire King oven glass casseroles, pie plates, and baking dishes. At your favorite chain, variety, hardware, or department store, you'll find a wide variety of Fire King oven glass, an ideal Mother's Day gift. Prices are amazingly low. Fire King oven glass is a product of Anchor Hawking. The most 
famous name in glass. Mr. King of the Apes was buried this morning, huh, Katie? That's right, Ethelbert. Yeah, Miss Williams and I just came from his funeral. I suppose the circus folks gave him a big send-off. They did. The funeral was a circus in itself, complete with brass bands. And Mrs. King gave a fine center ring performance. What do you mean? Well, she put on a big act, Ethelbert. She shed crocodile tears all over the place. And we think she cared about as much for her husband as I care for... Well, a 1940 model spring hat. Was that Wire Walker Finelli there, who you think is her boyfriend? No, he didn't come to the funeral. Neither did Tyann. Tyann's the other fellow who was King's assistant, huh? Yeah, the Dyak from Borneo. Hmm. Who's inherited King's place in the act. You think one of them people had something to do with King's death, don't you? Well, uh, King was crushed to death by that big orangutan, Dillinger. After he and the other apes in the ring had shown a marked reaction to the peculiar animal cries that everybody heard. Miss Williams and I had seen and heard Tyan talking to Nimbu that afternoon. And a lot of the circus people believe, really believe, that he has a special way of communicating with apes. And fantastic as it may seem, Ethelbert, those cries made by Tyan could have instructed Dillinger to turn on his master. That isn't fantastic hmm. at all, Annie. Not a bit. Dogs, horses, and lots of animals instinctively react to certain sounds, don't they? Oh, sure. It ain't hard to teach a pooch to sick him. Well, that's right. He wasn't seen by anybody when them cries were heard, was he? Uh, Tyan, I mean. But according to his story, he'd had a few drinks too many and was sleeping them off in the animal speed room. Another thing, Ethelbert. An expert from the zoo has examined Nimbu, and he says the big ape wasn't naturally sick. He'd been dope. Nimbu was the boss monk, and he liked King. And he had to be taken out of the act before... Tyan could do anything with Dillinger. What are the cops doing about all this? Nothing. Nothing they can do. No way of proving that those cries had anything to do with King's death. So it goes down in the books as, what do they call it, an accident incident to a hazardous profession, and that's that. And we can't even hint at our suspicions in the paper, Ethelbert, without letting the express in for a libel suit. Yeah, but in my book, Tyan caused the death of Charles King, and I think Mrs. King put him up to it. She's now free to play around with Finelli. And Mrs. King owns the act since her husband's death. I'm sure that she, Finelli, and Tyan were together in this thing, no, and I... Excuse I'd... me, there's the bar. Go ahead, pal. Go ahead. Hello, Blue Note Cafe, Ethelbert speaking. Yeah, just a minute. Your city editor, Casey. Oh, I'll give me it. Here. Hello, Burke. Yeah, yes, I'm here again. What? What happened at the Hippodrome? Hippodrome? That's where the circus is. Tell me that again, Burke. We'll get over there right away. So long. What is it, Casey? Finelli has been murdered. Finelli? And Tyan has been arrested for the killing. Casey. Annie, this doesn't add up. It just doesn't add up at all. How was Finelli killed, Captain Logan? The same way Marie Antoinette was. His head was cut off. Uh, oh, Ooh. holy. The lethal instrument in this case was a curved, razor-edged diac knife. It's been identified as belonging to that Borneo native, Tyan, who was found in his dressing room, dead drunk, with the murder knife beside him shortly after the murder was discovered. Did you sober him up enough to talk? He was able to deny that he'd killed anyone. Mm -hmm. Drunk or sober, nearly all killers can do that. Yeah, but why should he have killed Finelli, though, huh? Well, the guy's only one generation out of the jungle, and he was drunk. That's two reasons. Yeah, well, wait a minute, though, Logan. Tyan had just landed himself a sweet job. He'd become the big shot in a big feature act owned by Mrs. King. Oh, why should he pitch his big chance away and his life besides by killing our boyfriend? Uh-uh, that doesn't add up. Look... Hmm. This tie-in is a semi-savage from Borneo. He was lit to the skylight. Well, the murder weapon belonged to him, and we found it beside him. Now, Casey, take your little camera in hand and shoot pretty pictures for the paper. I've got important police work to do. So long, Miss Williams. Try to keep Casey from straining his <laughs> brain. Hmm. Wise guy, Logan. He's right about tie in Casey. Is he? Of course he is. <laughs> We're seeing a nice example of poetic justice. Mrs. King has Tyann arrange her husband's death so she can have Finelli. And then Tyann destroys the man she wanted and himself at the same time, and 
Now she's without a husband, without a boyfriend, and without a means of making a living. She has no one who can work those eight. Uh, wait a minute. Yes, she has. Johannes Fleer. Oh, say, I'd forgotten about him. Yeah, so had I, Oma. Annie, from the first, we've been wrong about this whole setup. Can't you see it, Annie? Flea, it's the guy. Why? Well, because he... He knows more about big apes than King does. I think Johannes Fleet doped Nimbu and gave that cry that caused Dillinger to kill King. And then when Tyan was put in King's place, Fleet pulled a second murder and framed Tyan for it. Well, where do we go from here? Well, we... Oh, I don't know. That's a help. Now, wait a minute, Annie. Give me a chance to think here. With... All right. We'll go to Bernice King. Mrs. King? Yes. Benelli's death puts her in the clear. Flea, it's been the whole works. And she can help us get the goods on him. How? Come on. We're going to pay her a call, Annie. And on the way, we'll pick up that wise guy, Logan. I think you're right, Mr. Casey. Thanks. Mr. You're Casey. more easily sold than I am, Mrs. King. I think he's altogether wrong. You would, Logan. <laughs> Whether he's right or wrong, Captain, I'll take any chance to get the man who may have caused my husband's death. You've been frank with me, Mr. Casey. You think I was in love with Luigi Finelli. I wasn't. If I looked twice at any man, he'd begin to spy on me, question me. With Finelli, I was deliberately trying to pay him off for the unhappiness and jealousy it caused me. Miss Williams, another woman would realize how I felt what I was doing. Oh, I do realize, Mrs. King. Now Charlie's gone. He, he, if I could only bring him back, he could be jealous. He could beat me anything. We're very sorry, Mrs. King. I won't cry anymore. What do you want me to do, Mr. Casey? Well, first, I want you to give Dillinger some of the same harmless dope we think was fed to Nimble. So flee it. We'll think that he's sick and we'll have to stay with him tonight. I don't get it, Casey. No, neither do I. Well, there's more than one way to trip up a murder. Now, tonight, Mrs. King, you will go to the animal room and talk with Fleet. Logan and I will be hidden behind the cages. Now, here's what I want you to think. What are you doing here so late, Mrs. King? I've come to talk to you, Joe. About Dillinger? Well, if you're worried about that orangutan, uh, I'm taking good care of him. I'm sure you are. You figure he and all my other orangs belong to you now, and you've become king of the apes. <laughs> That's right. You can't work them in the ring. I imagine you expect an increase in pay. Yeah, I wasn't going to rush you on this, Mrs. King, but since you bring the matter up, suppose we make it uh, from now on. Uh, I take all the money from the act and pay you 10% uh, of the net. You want 90%, huh? Well, is that not fair enough for an indispensable man? Joe, you're going to work for me in your new job for less money. Are you crazy? You see, if you don't accept my terms... I'm going to tell the police some things I know. What do you mean? I know who really killed Finelli and my husband. Oh, you know that, Mrs. King. I was here last night when Finelli was killed. I saw something. If you was here last night and saw something, why didn't you tell the cops? I got a better idea. I'm a businesswoman, Joe. It occurred to me that you'd work very cheap in order to escape... The electric chair. Mrs. King, you did a very foolish thing in coming here tonight. Why? The police will think you was worried about poor sick Dillinger. You was foolish enough to enter his cage while I was out of the room. What are you talking about? I'm putting you in his cage. Dillinger will do the rest, oh. as he did to your husband. Let me go. Oh, no, no. no. As I killed your husband, as I killed Finelli... Now I kill you! That's it, Logan! Pick him up, please! Oh, crap! Pick him up and let go of that woman! Oh, so this was all a trick! Let go of Mrs. King, I think. I washed you up, Joe! Oh, no, no, cops! To get me, you got to shoot through this woman! 
But I got the gun, too. Listen, Logan, he's holding you. You can't get out of here, Fred. Look, I got my gun at this woman's back. If I do not go free, she dies. You'll kill me, Captain. Got us, Logan. All of you, bent over by the wall. Uh, All right. Now, Mrs. King, we go. You'll never get away with this. I take my chances on that. Now walk in front of me. Out these cages. And slow, Mrs. King. I will. Oh, no. Oh, a big H got him by the throat. Got to close that case. Come on, help me pull him away from that orange, Casey. All right. Wait, he's... He's dropped it. Look, his neck is broken. He's dead. Nimble. He saved my life. Take it easy, Mrs. King. You're safe now. Huh. I guess Annie was right. I guess there is poetic justice. Back to Casey in just a moment. But first, here is a message from Anchor Hawking. I hope that every one of our listeners will make a special point to tune in crime photographer next Thursday evening. We're going to have an unusually exciting show, and the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation will have an announcement to make of the utmost importance. And now, tonight, we're celebrating National Baby Week. And in the interest of better health, retail stores and food packers throughout America are focusing attention on the scientifically prepared glass-packed baby foods which make it so easy to provide a properly balanced and healthful diet. Now, these glass-packed baby foods simplify the young mother's work enormously. You can heat and serve baby food in the same glass container in which you buy it and reseal it safely to store leftover portions. Glass containers are easy and safe to open, and they have no effect on taste, flavor, or purity. All better brands of prepared baby foods come to you packed in glass, in anchor glass containers protected by anchor vacuum caps. Both products of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. I suppose they've let that little guy tying out of jail now, huh, mm-hmm. Miss Wims? Yes, Ethelbert, after Captain Logan gave him a long talk about the electric chair he'd been so close to. <laughs> yeah, it made such an impression on Tyan that he took the pledge never to drink again. And he'll be back in the act as King of the Apes tonight. And uh, Casey and I are going to the circus again tonight to watch him work with Nimbu. Hey, as a matter of fact, the performance will start in half an hour, Annie. We'd better get over there. Huh? The ape acts don't go on too late, does it? Oh, almost at the end of the show, Ethelbert. But you're going to see the whole show again? <laughs> That's Casey's idea. Uh, well, uh, there's a lady acrobat I want to look at again, Ann. She has such beautiful eyes. <laughs> Crime Photographer, starring Scott Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass, Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Photographer is directed by John Deep. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town, so stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.